I'm going to do a very dangerous thing right now. Anybody got a question? <laughs> What's the role of forgiveness uh, in this mind, consciousness, and thought? Well, it doesn't matter if it's mind, consciousness, or thought. Forgiveness is a, one of the most marvelous things in the world. Not for you forgiving somebody else, but for you. Because when you don't have forgiveness and you have some horrible thoughts in your head about somebody, you're the one that's suffering. Believe me, you are. If you won't forgive anybody, you're suffering. Because every time you think about them, you start going through all this torment. But once you learn to forgive, you'll find the greatest relief for you. And when you find that great relief for you, then you start to see with clear eyes. You really do. Because without forgiveness in your heart, you have a problem. If you go for some therapy and you keep bringing up old, old things without forgiveness, you're just hurting yourself over and over again. And innocently, and I say innocently, Maybe your therapist sometimes brings these things up and it just makes it worse. And this is why you have to forgive. And I know if I won't forgive somebody, even for the slightest bit, it really hurts me. It's not worth having. Just learn to forgive. And when you do, you'll see a different world. You'll see that person different, whoever you're, you're not going to forgive. It's a magical thing, forgiveness. Now, I want you to be careful too. I've read books where they say that there's four principles. Well, there isn't. There's only three. And those three lie before time, space, and matter. They lie before creation. They're gifts that we use to go through life. The second you're born, you're clued into those these three principles. Those three principles along the they bring to life your freedom of thought and your five senses. And those five senses and your freedom of thought and the use of these three principles they guide you through life. But when you're looking for the secret to those three principles, you must go beyond the five senses. Because, you see, you're already there. And that's why I'm so confident, because it happened to me that I, in a few seconds, I went from <coughs> wherever I was, I went inside, I found this innate health, this innate wisdom, and realized that everybody has it. You have it, everybody has it. And this, if I, it can be done to me, God, I'm a Scotsman. <laughs> if it can happen to a Scotsman, it can happen to anybody. <laughs> it can happen to you. It can happen a little bit of a time, or it can happen all at once. But I wouldn't look for it happening all at once. I would just live. And if you find anything this weekend that changes your mind, don't look for more. Don't try. Because you can't think your way into wisdom. Because when you think your way into wisdom, you're thinking with your intellect. And your intellect is the, the illusion. It's connected to what you call an ego. Now, I hear... I, I know that a lot of, there's a lot of theories what ego is and how it works and how it doesn't work. But let me tell you something. Do you know what the re ego really is? It's a delusion. There is no such a thing as ego. Ego is whatever you think it is. 
Whatever you think your ego is, that's it. Because it's all a delusion. You're coming from the little mind. And the little mind is just your thought system. Whatever you think it is, that's what it is. You know, one of the biggest mistakes <coughs> is to think that the mind and the brain are the same thing. If you think that way, you will never, never, never in a million years find a secret to mental health. The brain is a biological computer. And like any other computer in this world, whatever you put into it is all you can get out. Now, the, the brain, as I'm saying, is a biological computer. Now, you go down to Radio Shack and you buy a computer. You bring it and you put it in your office and you put it on your desk and you sit and look at it. And you turn the switch. It says, there is a doornail. Nothing happens. It has no life. And you shake it and you turn the knob again and it's still no life. Then you realize, oh, it must have a source. It must have a source of power. Then you see this wire and it's got a plug on it. <laughs> and oh, I'll plug it into the wall. You do that, then you touch the knob, then it becomes alive. Do you know what makes your brain alive? Is the power of universal mind. That universal mind, it lies before time, space, and matter. And it's automatic. You don't have to plug in anything. The day you're born, you're in it. You've got this brand new computer. It's empty. You come into this world and you immediately, you come out the womb, you start experiencing this physical world. Your five senses kick in. You start to feel and taste and smell and then you're in the arena. You're in the, this universal arena until the day you die by using your five senses, the three principles, and the freedom of thought. Now, the freedom of thought and the freedom of deed is quite different. The freedom of thought, you can think what you want. You could be in jail and still think you're free. The freedom of thought is one of the greatest gifts given. And if you use it properly, and you use those principles properly, what happens is, you see, when you're born, you, you have, your mind is purity. You've got purity of thought, purity of consciousness, and purity of mind. You come into this world, your five senses kick in, then you're in a divine illusion. The second you come into this divine illusion, you start losing the power and the purity of those principles. Now, as you wander through life and you start getting negative experiences, you start to lose the purity of those principles. And sometimes you lose it so much, you start to become mentally sick. This is where you doctors come in. As soon as a person loses too much of this purity of mind, conscious, and thought, they become mentally unbalanced. So you doctors come in and you say, we'll help you then you try and get them back to purity of thought. But the secret is, if you don't know what thought really is, it's all guesswork. Learn what the principles are. Once you learn those principles, you, physician heal thyself, you become 
mentally very, very secure. You know the way. Somebody comes in and instead of seeing a sick person, you see past the sickness because you know they've got the same wisdom as you have. And we all have this wisdom to different degrees depending on the experience of our life. If you have, you've picked up experiences of anger, desire, hate, jealousy, envy, this is what will come out of you. But if you see that all, the, all those feelings, the feelings, all, they're all feelings, if you can see that those feelings are only created from thought, if you can honestly see that, then those feelings disappear and in their place comes love, nice feelings, hope, joy, helpfulness, you want to help people. It all changes just because you change your thoughts. You know what thought is? It's a magic paintbrush. It's a divine paintbrush. And you take your thoughts and you paint the picture of this world you live in by your thoughts. Now, whatever you paint is what you will see because our thoughts create our reality. The world we live in is created by thought. All the mess that this world is in today is created from human thought. You, if you can teach the world that their thoughts are creating the reality, the world that we live in today will change. And never go back in the past because the past is an illusion. It no longer exists. And this is where forgiveness comes in again, because you have to forgive those who harmed you in the past. I know when I was brought up, I was adopted. I didn't like where I lived. I didn't like my home. And I could sit here and tell you a whole bunch of horrible stories. And it'd be a, it'd be a, a therapist's dream to hear it. <laughs> They'd be saying, what else happened? Well, I'll tell you this, and I'll tell you that. And they say, wow, you're really in trouble, man. <laughs> but once I had this, this enlightening experience, I looked back with absolute clarity, and all I saw was two people who brought me up in total innocence. How I came into the world was brought on by total innocence. Everything was total innocence. And if I could go back now and see my parents, I would be so full of love for those people, immaterial what happened in the past, because you would see the innocence. And this is where therapy has to look. It has to change. It has to go the other way. Instead of going back, he has to find that the, the, the client's thoughts are creating the reality. It's so simple. I've been told it can't be that simple. You're insulting my intelligence. It's not that simple. And then they tell you all the horrible stories. And I'll say, well, what horrible stories? Well, I remember one 30 years ago and to go back 30 years. What 30 years? It's all an illusion in time. It's no longer real. There is only one real thing on this earth, and that's now. And as I said this morning, this is why all those wise people have always talked about the importance of the now. They didn't say that just for fun. But 
innocently, in the past, somebody has brought up the idea to go back in the past and blame somebody. We don't care who you blame, we blame somebody. <laughs> they don't care if it's your mother, your father, your granddad, your cousin, the kid down the block. It, it, they've got to blame somebody. But that is only, that was then. Then is an illusion in time. This is the greatest secret that psychology could ever, ever, ever have. It's to bring the clients to the now. And to bring them to the now, they've got to be taught that the past no longer exists. And they've taken their paintbrush and they're painting old pictures over and over and over again. These thoughts, they're painting over and over and over again until it's driving them nuts, driving them crazy. Because there's no forgiveness in that. Now you say to them, look, if you take your thoughts and bring it to the now, you could paint any picture you want. You could paint, you could start a new life. So please, here's the paintbrush, here's the palette, and the palette is full of beautiful paint. Just paint whatever you want. Then they start painting the now. And the now, they can paint anything they want. They start life all over again. It's a new life. It's a second chance. It's so simple. It's so simple, it's the most difficult thing in the world to believe because your thoughts will not believe it. It's your thoughts that are stopping you from seeing. Nothing else. It's a world of thought. We create our own reality. Whether you like that or not, maybe you'll get angry at me saying this, but you create your own reality. What you see and how you react to what you see is, is your reality. You know, there was, during the Second World War, there was a lot of people in concentration camps. And it was terrible, horrible, horrible existence. And yet some people, still kept their happiness and the love in their heart without hate. And other ones, they went under. Now, they're in the same camp, but one kept her sanity and one didn't because they painted different pictures every day. There is nothing more powerful than thought. And as I said before, I've read a book that says they've now discovered the fourth one. And the fourth one is emotions. <coughs> Tell me something. How can you possibly have an emotion without using the principles? The principles can never change because they lie before time, space, and matter. And this is why I'm saying they're spiritual. That's the only reason I'm saying they're spiritual, because they have no form. And if they have no form, how can they change? It's impossible. Now, just lately, I heard there's one woman, she's discovered eight. Probably 10 years from now, there'll be 25, unless we smarten up. In the medical field, if you go way, way back, they'd bore a hole in your head to let evil spirits out. Not, not that long ago, really, in time, there was blood let. So? <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> I rest my case. Well, when I first heard about this, there was roughly three different, uh, 300 theories. Now it's up to 500. But they haven't thrown anything away. You have to throw away 
bring in the new. And in its place will come this beautiful thing created from the three principles, created from wisdom that lies within, and it will change the field forever. Then, when this wisdom comes, the other ones will just vanish. They'll vanish like mist in the morning sun. And it has to be that way. I know I can get in trouble for saying this, but I have no other choice. I honestly have no other choice. I'm trying to be honest. I'm trying to be helpful. I, I, nothing in this world I'd give my life if I could change this world. If I could change doctors that were going to help children and, and people that are suffering all over the world, it'd be worth it. I've devoted my entire life to this. And when I see these doctors change, and I hear the miracles that are happening in their clinics, it's worth it. It's worth it. 